Do you guys ever have any reason to talk about that? Well, yes. So I, I think it would have been Justice Blackman's, it, was, it might have been his 80th birthday, but it was one of his big birthdays. We were having a clerk's reunion. And as you know, in Flood Against Kuhn, which is the baseball antitrust case, there's this um, kind of passage at the beginning of it that's a list of famous baseball players, and it goes on and on. And apparently he started out with about 10 of them, then various people around the building would suggest people, and then somebody said, well, but if you're going to include, you know, if you're going to include Tinkers, you have to include Evers. Oh, if you're going to include Evers, you have to include Chance. And so they just, that list kind of mm -hmm. expanded and expanded. And there was a story in The Brethren that um, right after the opinion came down, somebody said to him, how could you not include Jimmy Fox? And he said, Jimmy Fox was on the list. And the person said, no, he's not. And the justice went back and looked at the list, and sure enough, Jimmy Fox is not on the list. And the line in the um, Brethren is something like, and Justice Biden said, I'll never forgive myself. So <laughs> for his, for his, um, for his uh, 80th birthday, I think it was his 80th, we decided we were going to get him one of Jimmy Fox's bats. Uh. And we looked into it, and we could not find one. But it turns out that Hellrich and Bradley, I think that's what the Louisville Slugger Company's name is, they keep the measurements of every player on file for their bats. And so we went to them, and we had them replicate um, one of Jimmy Fox's bats, and we had it mounted on a plaque. And on the bottom, it just said, I will never forgive myself, H-A-B. <laughs> and we gave it to him. The clerks all gave it to him for uh, uh, his um, his his birthday, um, and I saw it actually posted in his chambers the day he died. After his funeral, we all went back to the chambers to hang out, and there was the bat, which I think was several people asked for it, but I think it was given to the Library of Congress. And the other thing about baseball that I is he had been a friend of the Griffiths, who owned the uh, then the Minneapolis Millers, mm -hmm. later the the Twins, um, and so we would talk about baseball a lot at. Um, at breakfast, and um, uh, one day in the afternoon, he, we, I was in the upstairs chambers, and I got a phone call, you should come down, the justice has somebody he wants you to meet. And this group called the Emil Verbin Society was having its reunion in Washington, I, I guess as a Cubs uh, yep. thing. And so um, I, there were these three guys in like bad fitting sports coats in his office, and, and he introduced them to me, and two of them, I don't remember the names because I'm not a Cubs fan at all, but the last one was Andy Pafka, who had been a Dodger as well, and so I had a nice conversation one afternoon with uh, Andy Pafko. Um, and the last baseball thing I'll tell you is when um, Justice Blackman retired from the Supreme Court, I was asked to do one of the tributes for him in the Harvard Law Review, and uh, one of the things I talked about um, in the um, in the um, tribute was. This uh, article that had been written called Your Law Baseball Quiz, I think I told you about this last night, where they compare uh, different justices to different um, uh, famous baseball players. And I said that, you know, and so I tell the story of, you know, Jackie Jensen is like Byron White because they're both better at football. And, um, and then I say, you know, and they, he compared, the guy who did this compared um, Felix Frankfurter to, among other things, Wayne Terwilliger. And, I, and, I, and in the article, I just had a footnote, I said, who is Wayne Terwilliger? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, and then ultimately I said that if I had to pick somebody for Justice Blackman to be like, I had thought originally about Bobby Brown because Justice Blackman wanted to be a doctor, just like Bobby Brown became a doctor. And that I thought of, you know, um, a couple of other people like that, you know, Charlie Geringer because he was a little tiny, you know, um, a little tiny second baseman and, you know, a great fielder, but not not a big batter, and ultimately I came out with Dave Winfield, which people might not have guessed, because both of them sure. came from St. Paul and made something of themselves. Both of them played the game long after many of their contemporaries had retired, and both of them owed their start to a convicted but later pardoned Watergate felon. Uh, to, to a later, I'm sorry, to a later pardoned Watergate felon, because um, uh, Blackman got his seat on the Supreme Court from Nixon, and um, uh, George Steinbrenner is the person who gave Dave Winfield his biggest contract. Um, <laughs> and so terrific. when I so, yeah, so I read this and I went and I, you know and I, the next time I visited the justice, the justice said, "Oh, I really liked your um, 
your tribute a lot, but come with me. And he led me down the hall into the storeroom. He was then down at the Thurgood Marshall Center. And he pulled out a copy of the baseball encyclopedia. And he said, this is Wayne Terwilliger. And took me to the page for Wayne Terwilliger. So. Twig. <laughs> I'd never heard of him. And I'm a baseball fan, and I'd never heard of him. Should baseball retain its antitrust exemption? Well, you know, I'm a big Bill James fan, and Bill James has a discussion of this where he says that if you got rid of the antitrust exemption, what you might start to see is a kind of proliferation of a third or fourth uh, major league almost coming out of minor league teams. Um, I'm not sure what function the antitrust exemption really performs today, given that there's now an agreement between the Players Association and the teams, right? Um, you know, and, the, and a huge percentage, ever since free agency, a huge percentage of the revenue has moved over to the players. I'm not sure that the existing players would favor getting rid of the antitrust exemption. Such an anachronism. Yeah, yeah. But hard to see that it's actually having much effect on the, on the game itself. Um, and the real question is how you maintain competitive balance, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to maintain the sport, the real question is how to maintain competitive balance. And without the antitrust exemption, it might be harder.